In this video, we're talking to game programmer Steve McGreal about the differences between indie and big games. Did I tell you that I've downloaded Unity? Have you done anything yet? Ooh. What are some of the games you worked on? The most interesting games are the ones that never came out. Like, not all games get finished. But the ones that did get finished, um, so at EA, I worked on some of the Harry Potter games, which was pretty cool. And then I, after a while, I went to Rockstar and worked on some of the Grand Theft Auto games. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah, that's a pretty exciting, pretty exciting thing to have been involved in. They were the ones, we were the ones on the PSP, which a handheld machine from a few years back. And then I spent about three years working on like a music sequencer thing on the PSP called Beatorator, which wasn't really a game. It was very cool. You could like make your own tunes and stuff. And we uh, we did lots of lots of technical challenges to program something like that. And um, nobody bought it. Oh no! Oh, it happens. I worked on LA Noir for a bit, the sort of detective game. Oh yeah, I've heard of that one. It's supposed to be really, really good. Lots of people liked it. I was, I, I got to the point by the time that it came out that I just never wanted to look at it again. So. I've heard that developers never play their own games. Is that true? Yeah, it's about like a, I think everybody, everybody ends up like testing the games a bit and trying to find bugs and just making sure that the bit that they've made works and things. But you know, you can be working on a game for a year, two years, three years, more. Depend, you know, like like the big console games now go for years and years. And I think by the time they get to the end, certainly for me, I'm sick of the sight of them. <laughs> that makes sense. Very few of the games that I've made, I really have sat down and played afterwards. Some of the GTA games, they're pretty cool. You talked about games that didn't come out. How many would that involve? Oh, I don't know. Like, may, or probably, maybe not not quite half of the games. That, yeah, like, pro out of all the games that I've worked on, maybe 60% of them have come out, and maybe 40% of them didn't. What? That's, like, crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of that was like prototypes where we'd spend two weeks making something and we'd be like, this is really cool, we made this thing. And then um, uh, the people that are in charge of deciding whether or not to actually commit millions of dollars or whatever into making it go, yeah, it's nice, but no. <laughs> they don't want to take the risk. Yeah, I haven't really worked on anything that, that got really far and really close to being done. Uh, some smaller games, maybe, but... Um, um yeah it's mostly like things that we things that we tried out and that i think would have been really interesting but they didn't get very far you said you made some indie games tell me about those back in the 90s <laughs> um i made a few i set up a little company called mungus software i don't know what mungus means well now it's like a mungus right like it's that's what people call that game but this was it was just a word so yeah i made a, i made a few things i made a thing called blocker where you're a little ball and you like push against these blocks and it moves these other blocks and squishes the bad guys and a thing called um <clears throat> imposters that was sort of all these different imps with different skills a little bit like lemmings that kind of thing um and a, a few other a few other things uh, i made them with my friend uh, my friend john who lived down the road and he bought the same the same type of computer as me did you separate the task in terms of what roles you each took we kind of both just did what we were interested in so sometimes that was different tasks on the same game or sometimes that was we just like worked on different games uh, we were both in school at the time like uh, the main thing that we collaborated on a lot was that was design so we uh we used to we used to, to sit in, we decided that our German lessons in school were the ones that we were just going to ignore. Okay, so basically, German lessons are good to make games. Uh, they were for me. I, I mean, there'll be, there'll be, if there's any German teachers watching this, I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, German is good. You can design games during that time. Well, yeah, so we, we just, we sat at the back and like, just like sketched out levels for games. And then I would just go home and like, you know, code up the levels and try them and come back the, you know, the next day and, and say, well, that didn't quite work, but we tried that. Or, you know, this was good. Let's go design another 10 levels um, in German. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of how we did it, really. That was okay. You know, we, 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 we sold enough to sort of cover the cost of the discs and the photocopying of all the packaging and the travel to these, um, these trade shows where we sold them and it covered the cost of adverts and 
any, or I guess any hardware in games that we bought as well. We didn't get rich off that, but it sort of paid for itself as a hobby, which I think was, we were pretty lucky. Um, and then years later, like a couple of years ago, there's a, there's a guy that's still, um, uh, still doing some stuff uh, like on the, on the, the Sam Coupe, this old kind of machine. And so he was like, well, I want to, you know, re-release or remake or do a bunch of stuff with these old games that you made so he bought the rights to all of our back catalogue which i uh which i put towards buying a switch which was nice um <laughs> so years later i i it helped me buy a switch so you wrote a bunch of games sold off the rights to buy a console that's awesome yeah like 25 years later but yeah that's that's so i think I, i'm calling that a success how do indie studios differ from big companies the big companies. Well, okay. So at, at, at the time we're talking about like working on a machine that with quite limited hardware. So I think there, there wasn't much distinction between like the indie games and like the professional games, like, a, like indie wasn't really a word back then. I was just making games. And I think, so then there wasn't a distinction. Now there is a huge distinction because if I was going to make an indie game now, I would probably make something that was a bit like the stuff that I made back then. It would be maybe 2d and I'd maybe get maybe working out on my own or like find one or two other people to make it with. Whereas as you look at all the whole range of games that can exist now and there's 3d games and like really photo realistic graphics these like enormous budgets hundreds of people can work on this stuff and it's more like a you know like a hollywood blockbuster or something than something that somebody made in their garage so there's a there's a much bigger range now i think like the main difference between an indie game um and a sort of i don't know what you call it I want to say professional game, but I think indies can be really professional as well. But like a big, a, you know, big budget commercial game from a company. I think the main difference is that as an indie, you have to do a lot more. You have to be responsible for a lot more of the things that happen in the game. So not just coding or art or design, but like a bit of all of those and some testing and some marketing and some, but being involved in all of those things means that you get, you get a lot of control, I guess. Like you put a lot of yourself into it so that at the end of it, look at that thing and go like, I did that. I did it a really big piece of that is just me and that's that sense of ownership is really cool whereas the bigger the bigger games you can say i did that one small part of this really big thing and the big thing's amazing but yeah like oh, I, I did this little bit of it and i think like both of those are good experiences but they're very different very different kinds of games and different kinds of ways of making them my preference over my career i started out in the big studios ea rockstar these very big famous companies and my um my progress through through the parts of my career where I was making games tended to be going into smaller and smaller studios and smaller and smaller teams and getting like, I guess as far, as close back as I can to those sort of indie days because I like the little teams. I like the big responsibilities. I like that sense of ownership. So different, different people might like different things. So there, if you want to take on many roles, go indie or small studio. If you want to specialize, go to big studios. What would you go for? I think I'd go indie. Yeah, me too. Maybe we should start something. If you want to find out what the typical day is for a software engineer in the games industry, click here.